All right, today we're going to be taking a look at the Drift Wobble Slider, the new slider for iTerm in Betaflight 4.3. We're going to be doing a little bit of experiment on iTerm tuning. So with this, you'll be able to apply this against any firmware, really, when it comes to the iTerm. And what exactly are the behaviors that you see versus a low versus high iTerm? And, you know, a little bit more depth on how to tune that out. Um, Betaflight 4.3 is pretty easy with the sliders. Uh, Betaflight 4.2 just as good. There's ways to manipulate that. We'll show you that. And then of course your other firmwares, KISS, Falco X, Emu Flight, iNav, so on and so forth. So to give you a roadmap on the black box overlay that's going to be on the video, this orange line, this burnt orange line here, that is throttle. And then each of these green lines that you'll see here, so this is roll, this is pitch down here, this green line, and this is yaw. So you can see roll, pitch, and yaw uh, labels on the right-hand side. The green is the sticks, so that's what we're commanding the quad to do in, in rotation in degrees per second. That's just how, that's how all flight uh, software works. And the uh, some of this blue, this cyan kind of blue line here, that's actually what the quad is doing for rotation. So you can see we're really not commanding rotation right here on the roll axis, but it is rotating a little bit. So when I punch the throttle, you could see the quad kind of did this thing where it just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna exaggerate it because it was it's so very slight here that you're not gonna see it, but you can, it actually rotated to the right. Uh, down is to the right. Um, up on the pitch is forward, uh, down is backwards, and yaw, if it's, I think if it's positive, it's yaw to the right, if it's negative, it's yaw to the left, if I have that right. So to illustrate that in motion, if I bring it in the black box logging where I can slow it down to half the rate, if I play through this in this section, you can see as I pump the throttle, you can see the nose physically moving up and down, but then you can also see these lines deviating. So the, the cyan line on the pitch axis is coming off of the green line on the pitch access uh, where it's you know it's not commanding it to do that it's just a deviation Engines all right so this is low eye term we have the kit the slider all the way down the other thing i have is i turned off anti-gravity so let's see that's what we look like without anti-gravity in the nose throttle And see some drifting around there so we're looking for specific things on when you get off the throttle how does that nose track you can kind of see we got a little bit of a, a if you look at the horizon it kind of dips down and to the right and then also just trying to pay attention to the throttles Next thing we're going to do, and you're not going to be able to see this, but we'll take a look at this at logs, but the orbits. And how well does that hold? And then also just doing some flips and rolls. How does that look? And maybe some race moves. And we'll look at all this in the log overlay. So we can look at that all with the overlay and see what we see. But iTerm is really going to have an impact on those items the most. Let's do some prop wash real quick on my batteries. All right, I got to bring this in. All right, so now on this one, what we can do is go into PID profiles, simplified sliders. Notice I have that nice gray background now, and we are going to crank that all the way up to 
That is going to put I term near 250, exactly 250 on some of them. So it's going to crank it way up. So we'll go back in there and make sure it's set. Yep. Back, back, up, back, save and exit. Now with Betaflight 4.2, it's a little bit more complicated. Again, you don't have the sliders in the OSD. You can only use the configurator. You could just manually bump them up in the OSD, but then you have to kind of do all of them at the same time. It's kind of a little bit of a pain. Uh, in the configurator, it's still kind of a little bit of a pain because you don't have like an iTerm slider. So the only way you could really do it is you could bring down your PND gain slider and then slide up your master so you can see that you know now this is 30 and 32 let's look at what it was before so it's 30 and 32 so if we bring this down by half and then double this this is 30 and 32 again but now the i term is higher so it takes like manipulating two things just to bring up the i term and of course with something like kiss falco x emu flight or inav you would just have to raise these values manually uh so you could take these up kiss is kind of weird with its uh you know i it's, you'd have to take it up to like 1.0 or something like that uh you know you can adjust those ranges accordingly many just they just do it manually either in the osd or in the configurator you'll have something that will slide up your roll pitch and y'all all together uh like you do with beta flight 4.3 okay so this is super high i term again 48k pwm for esc and uh no anti-gravity So one thing I'm noticing there, I still see the throttle because I don't have anti-gravity. And if you're interested in seeing the difference that anti-gravity makes, go ahead and check out the link down below in the video description for this week's Patreon video, which is releasing right now. Uh, basically after these flights showing what uh, anti-gravity does, turning it on, what difference it makes. And then we go through some different tweaks you can even make to anti-gravity itself. But I don't see that drift. See that this way. You can see it's holding the nose better. See how it doesn't drift down to the right? It drifts down, it just lets loose a little bit, but it doesn't drift down to the right. And then the throbbles look a little bit better. That's pretty good. Let's do uh, orbits. See how well that tracks. I think I'm gonna break this in and change this pack. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna change this pack real quick. Fun fun. Alright, new pack. Let's do the orbits right away. See how it make sure it's see it doesn't go down to the right. It hops down a little bit, but not to the right. Wants to, but it gets caught up quicker. So the eye term reacts faster. So let's check out what we see here. Some Check out the little wash, and I gotta bring this in.
Yeah, definitely that down to the right is better. A couple flips and rolls here and bring it in. So you can see it tightens it up and that is a uh, big thing you can notice on this is how much space. I mean, we went from my terms of like the 30s and 40s to um, 250. Beating the battery, beating the battery. Engines disarmed. So a couple things I'm noticing just by doing a quick log review is that with higher eye term, you're getting more stability on the other axes once you're doing a roll or a flip on say roll, you're getting more stability on pitch and y'all. And you can see that here, this is a, a roll on with low and this is a roll with high and you can see the deviations on the pitch access are less with uh, with higher eye term with, with over here. I'm not really seeing much difference in the doing the orbits between the two. They both seem to be tracking right on the sticks as you can see right here. And then the other thing I'm noticing is this through the racing moves, I'm seeing a little bit better tracking with the higher eye term. It's definitely subtle, uh, but it's there just a little bit. You can see how on the lower eye term, how this is kind of tracking and has come off uh, course a little bit. Same thing on yaw, maybe in pitch here a little bit. Whereas on the higher eye term, you can see with just a little bit better tracking. It's, it's tough to relay because you gotta kind of go through them both. Like I said, it's subtle at the same time. But caution that if you do go too high on it, you could see uh, degraded prop wash performance. You can see right here how the eye term is actually pushing the quad, uh, this, you know, to roll to the right here. And you can see the deviation going way up as well. And then it's correcting and now it's over correcting to push down to the left and now the quad goes down to the left. So as you eke that up more and more, uh, again, you could see that prop wash performance degrade a little bit. So just keep your eye on that. And if you go too far, just slide the slider back down a little bit, you know, you've kind of reached your max. In beta flight, if you would see any eye term induced bounce back as you're raising that up, uh, you can offset that for, for like flips and rolls. You can see here, eye term relax is doing its job and kind of locking the eye term during a, a fast uh, roll move here. But we are getting a little bit of wind up and you can't even see this bounce back. It's so very subtle, so I wouldn't worry about it. But if you did have any at all, what you can do is go into this eye term relax variable here and then bring this cutoff down to 10 or even five in some cases for cine lifters uh, and whoops, I would bring this down to, in those in general, I would just set this at five at the start. Regardless of bringing eye term up or down, they just, that cutoff just needs to be lower for uh, quads with uh, lower power to weight ratio, something that's the motor's really struggling to, to push around. So you can see with eye turn tuning, you have quite a bit of range that you can uh, go with. It's at least like something on a five inch. When you're on something bigger, uh, like a cine whoop or something like that, things change. Eye terms more because they're so underpowered. Um, you know, things like whoops and cine lifters, it's just they're carrying so much weight for a cine lifter's case, and a whoop, it's just really small motors and ducks and all that kind of jazz. The eye term really comes into play a lot more, and you have to tune that out just because you have typically so much pit error, which is basically the sticks not falling or the quad not falling the sticks. But for a five inch, you have a lot of range you can play with. Uh, generally, the higher the eye term, the better flight performance you're gonna have. So don't be afraid to crank those eye terms up. Uh, with beta flight, you have eye term relax. That's gonna save you on uh, any deviations for like uh, flips and rolls without getting into too much detail. It's not gonna cause any bounce back because of eye term, so that's a nice tool. Uh, definitely always keep that turned on. And, you know, the other bad things about iTerm, Beta Flight has some things in the mix. I'm going to cut the sun in the eyes there a little bit. So yeah, you can crank it up quite a bit and it will keep the quad right on the sticks for you uh, and help with flight performance. So again, just like all the other terms, the higher the iTerm, generally the better. If you do get it too high, uh, you'll start to see wobble. So then obviously you've known going too high at that point. Just keep in, in mind that your I term isn't related to your P term. That's the only two things you need to worry about. The I term and the D term have no relationship to each other whatsoever. So don't worry about D, don't worry about filters, don't worry about all that stuff. It's just what is your I term in relation to your P term? And again, with Betaflight uh, 4.3, it, it helps you keep that, uh, that straight with the uh, drift wobble slider.
But with that, thanks everybody, and I hope this helped.